Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, we've got a big trade to discuss today. As we have discussed over the past couple of days since the Eric Carlson trade happened last week, we have an NHL trade to discuss. Jeff Petrie has indeed been flipped by the Montreal Canadiens and he's heading over to Atlantic Division rivals, the Detroit Red Wings. We'll get to all of that coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Nintendo Hockey Channel. Now I know I've already done my video, but just a couple of hours after I did my video, uh, there was a major trade that happened, to, and that is that the Jeff Petrie has indeed been flipped by the Montreal Canadiens and is heading to the Detroit Red Wings. And I don't think this is too much of a surprise. Uh, we knew Petrie was going to get flipped. We, there was a lot of talk over the weekend that there was going to be a, a trade in place at some point. Uh, there was a lot of talk about Minnesota. There was a lot of talk about Dallas. There was some talk about uh, Petrie possibly going to Detroit, given the fact that Detroit's really close to his home in Michigan, where he was born, so it was sort of a homecoming for him. So there was a lot of people who thought he could go to Detroit, but uh, given the fact that Detroit has a really deep defense, a lot of people didn't think that was going to be a very likely option, but it does indeed happen. So Petrie is heading to the Detroit Red Wings, so that's a that's a decent pickup for the Red Wings. Uh, they get him at 50% of his contract retained, so his contract with the Detroit Red Wings with 25% being retained by Pittsburgh and 50% being retained by Montreal for the next two years will only be a $2.34 million cap it. That is not bad at all. Uh, Petrie is solid. He can play third per minute. He can even play second per minute if there's injuries. He's a good offensive defenseman. He's a really good addition there for the Red Wings. So I think at uh, $2.34 million for this year and the next year, I think that's a fantastic deal for the Detroit Red Wings. So Petrie is in the older stages of his career, being a 35-year-old defenseman, but he can still play well. Uh, like I said, he's got $2.34 million cap hit for, with the Detroit Red Wings for the next couple of years. Uh, he's had a couple of really good seasons over the past uh, few seasons. Before his last season in Montreal a couple of years ago, he put up four straight 40-point seasons, which was fantastic for him. Two years ago, he didn't do fantastic, only putting up 27 points in 68 games. Uh, it sort of seemed like he wanted to out of Montreal. He was dealt to Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, he did all right, putting up five goals, 31 points, 61 games, so a bit of a better season, but was still injured. What didn't really fit in overly well with Pittsburgh, so Pittsburgh dealt him with 25% of his retained salary to back to Montreal. That's probably the Eric Carlson trade that happened last week, and ever since Carl's, that trade happened, there was a lot of talk that he was going to get flipped, uh, that he didn't really want to remain with the Montreal Canadiens. He wanted to uh, go to somewhere else. Uh, there was a lot of talk that there could be a couple of other teams. He still had a no... Uh, uh, movement clause so it could block other teams so it really didn't uh, matter to Petrie where he was going to wind up and he goes to Detroit so that's a pretty good deal I think of a pretty good time in Detroit now if you look at the Detroit Red Wings defense here uh, it's really crowded at this point in time. They still have Ben Sherratt who signed for the next three seasons. They have Justin Hall who signed for the next three seasons. They have Oli Mata who signed for a couple seasons. And now Jeff Petrie who signed for a couple seasons. Goss Spare who's uh, uh, signed a one-year deal this offseason. They still have Moritz Sider. And those are six really good defensemen. And then on top of that, you had Timon Edvinson to the mix. And they have a really stacked blue line. So I, I, I'm not sure if Edmondson makes the uh, NHL team out of the gates. Just given the fact he's still waivers ineligible. So uh, he can still be sent down without needing waivers. So I, I do wonder if maybe Edmondson starts the season in the minors now. But that's a really uh, very older, more veteran type uh, defense. I mean, if you got Wallman, who will probably most likely start this season as a top pair of cider. You now have Sherratt. Gossip Spare, Hole, Mata, and Petrie to round out the bottom four players. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think Petrie could definitely be a solid third pair defenseman, maybe playing with a guy like uh, Mata on a third pair. I think a Mata Petrie pair could be a really good pair on a third pair for the Red Wings. I think it's a really good improvement on the defensive end. So, in my opinion, that's a really good pickup for the Red Wings to get Jeff Petrie. Not exactly sure where he fits completely in the lineup, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was a solid third pair defenseman for the Red Wings. As for the return that the uh, Canadians got, we know there was a lot of talk that they could get some pretty decent players or uh, like a prospect or a pick from there, uh, get some more assets for the future. Uh, there was some talk that they could get possibly a first round pick. I saw some some speculation about that over the weekend. I was not exactly sure they were going to first. I could see it. I could have seen them getting a second or a third. The return is not overly great, but it's been a pretty good uh, return. They get uh, defensive player Gustav Lindstrom and a 2025 fourth round pick that's conditional. So the Red Wings 
will give the Canadians the later of the Detroit and Boston 2025 fourth round picks. So currently after the uh, Tyler Bertuzzi trade, the Red Wings have the Bruins and their own 2025 fourth round picks. So the later of those two in the 2025 draft will go to the Montreal Canadiens. So Canadians get a fourth round pick and a young guy, Gustav Lundstrom. So a fourth round pick's good, uh, depending on how Boston and Detroit do it. Like Detroit's a team on the rise right now. Boston is still probably going to be battling for a playoff spot this year. Will they be battling for a playoff spot next year? That's yet to be seen, but I think it's quite possible that Boston could start to slip a little bit now. So if Boston starts to slip off, maybe that's a really a, a better type of fourth round pick for them. But definitely, I think they could have a, a, a decent fourth round pick in the 2025 draft. Either way, that's going to help them with their draft capital. On top of that, they get Gustav Lindstrom. Now, Lindstrom has been a decent third pair defenseman for the Red Wings uh, over the past couple of seasons. He was not qualified by the Red Wings uh, this past year as an RFA. He was going to head to UFA, but the Red Wings came in terms before uh, free agency uh, with Lindstrom. They didn't want to give him his qualifying offer, so they wound up giving him a one-year deal with the AV of $950,000. Lindstrom's a solid defenseman. Uh, like I said, it's likely a third pair defenseman. Uh, he was a second round pick back in the 2017 draft. He's really been developing well over the past couple of years. His best season was two years ago when he got into 63 games with the Red Wings, picking up a goal and 13 points in those 63 games. So he definitely has some potential. Last year with the Red Wings moves, he was mostly a healthy scratch on that team. Uh, he put up a goal and eight points in 36 games. So definitely a, a bit better of a season, just not as many games played. So if he can round out himself as a solid third pair defenseman in Montreal, I think he could be a fantastic addition to that team. He's also 24, so he'll be at RFA at the end of this year. So if he does really well, the Canadians could try and extend him. Uh, the Canadians don't have an overly deep uh, defensive group at this current point in time with a lot of NHL defenders. Uh, they do have solid players like Matheson and Savard. They also have guys like Harris and Gouli and Kovacevic and Baron, who obviously established themselves as solid defensemen. They have a couple of more depth defensemen like uh, Weidman and Kovacevic, and now they added uh, Gustav Lindstrom to that mix. So it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't really do overly well in training camp. He was maybe placed on waivers and sent to the minors before the season started. But it also wouldn't surprise me if he was able to make the ro roster and the Canadians maybe move a couple of guys such as uh, Justin Baron or uh, a guy like Chris Weidman down. And if they move Baron or Weidman down, I think he could definitely be like a solid seventh defenseman or maybe a solid third pair defenseman. So for the Canes, they get a younger uh, third pair defenseman who can still grow with their team. Not overly old, only 24 years old. And he could definitely be a solid third pair defenseman for the next couple of years for that team. Plus they get a fourth round pick, which will add to their draft capital for next year. Not this upcoming draft, but the year after. Uh, for the Red Wings, they get a solid third pair defenseman who can put up some points on their third pair. Uh, I do wonder what this means for a guy like Simone Edvinson, but it'll definitely be a, a solid third pair defenseman who can put up points in uh, Detroit. Petrie goes home. He goes closer to home in Michigan uh, with going to Detroit. So uh, all in all, I think this is a really good trade for all three parties involved. Uh, Petrie gets to go closer to home. Montreal gets a decent return, a cheaper forward in Lindstrom, but doesn't make as much money, as well as a decent pick that he can use as draft capital. And then the Red Wings get a decent, better upgrade because I think Petrie's definitely a more established uh, defenseman at this point in time than Lindstrom. Because they get a definitely a more established defenseman in Petrie uh, to work on that third pair. So definitely, I like this trade for all the teams involved. Love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. Who wins this trade? Do the Red Wings win this trade by getting Petrie? Do the Canadians win this trade by getting a fourth? And Lindstrom for a player who they didn't even have a week ago? Or do is this sort of like a win-win trade where the, the Red Wings get the player that they needed? and the Canadians get the players they need. Definitely love to hear your thoughts down in the comments, but that's all I'm going to talk about in this video. Remember to like this video, and if you liked it, remember to subscribe down below. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that, so definitely check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.